long were you there before Roy Keane came in? I was there f- uh, three or four years I was before right. Roy got there. And um, my contract was actually, Jim lost his job, unfortunately, and then Roy came in uh, towards the end of the season. I think we had about four or five games left. And uh, my contract, I was getting advised... I was going to Fiorentina yeah. <laughs> to basically leave my leave my contract and just see where I was going to be at. And I've done four years down at Ipswich, and even though it was a great club and I loved it and I had a really good relationship with the supporters and everyone down there, um, I just I was getting to the stage where I fancied a fresh challenge and maybe to come back up north a bit, bit closer to where my family. I was living down there single on my own, um, so I just wanted to see what options I had basically. And then it was announced that Roy got the job. And Roy was my absolute hero growing up, like a Man United fan. I loved him. Um, and he sat me down the first week he was there and he was like, listen, you've left your contract, what's the situation? Um, I, I, and I told him, I had a discussion, I just said exactly what I've just said to you. And he basically, pers- he didn't have to persuade me because no matter what he would have offered me, I'd have jumped through hoops for him, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So he's, I ended up signing a new three-year deal and um, signed a new contract with him. Main yeah. captain? Made me captain. Uh, that was one of the first things he did, yeah. We went on a pre-season. We did the f- few games and he obviously had a look at the squad and brought in a few players. First pre-season, we've, um, he made me captain and we went to... You might have heard about this on a few podcasts where he took us to the parachute regiment. You heard about yeah. it? He took us to a, this parachute regiment in, um, in Colchester. We had a friendly... And he said, lads, um, the ne- tomorrow when you uh, when you wake up, I want you to make your way to Portman Road at half eight in the morning. I, you know, I'm not telling you where we're going. You don't need any phones. You don't need any wallets. You don't need any overnight bags. Just bring yourselves a pair of jeans, a pair of trainers, tracky bottoms or whatever. Um, just bring yourselves. Don't need to bring anything else. Just tell your missuses or your girlfriends or your boyfriends or wherever else that you, <laughs> you're not going to be here for, for 48 hours. Or, or contactable for 48 hours. So we were like, where the hell is he taking us? You know what I mean? It was weird. So uh, we arrived at Portman Road the next morning and we're on the bus now. We still don't know where we're going. End up at Colchester Parachute Regiment, which wasn't wasn't far away. It was just along the A12. And uh, we pull in and these four lunatic lieutenants have jumped <laughs> on this bus, split us into groups and like give us this big, massive backpack and we're off now we're, we're, we're off in groups doing whispers things. before I'm where you might be going didn't have a clue honestly so like, no what clue you packed? whatsoever I was thinking have you got have you got we your weren't allowed any- in there have you no, got you? weren't allowed anything no, fol- no phones no wallets nothing so we were off now we went off in groups of sixes some were doing physical work some were doing mental activities like all what the, the paras did and it was a good experience to be fair it was it was hard work but, but it was, at the time I bet your morning light like, fuck right was, yeah. yeah you can imagine can't yeah. you we were given like the proper paras gear like the camouflage gear to put on big massive boots with blisters everywhere we were off marching up hills and off cross countries and so we'd done the whole day's activities we were knackered and it was more like for physical exercise but it was also mental and like a bit of a team spirit kind of thing that, that was the thinking behind it so at the night time, they've brought these, um, we were all starving, we hadn't eaten all day and we've congregated into like this big campfire and we'd first time we'd seen all the lads together and they, they go, uh, right, um, go and make your beds for the night. And we were like, what do you mean make the beds for the night? He said, in the bottom of your bags, you'll see there'll be one between two of you, like a big pl- plastic sheet. Tie it up against a tree, flat and tight. Here's a kipping under it for the night. So he's, we were all moaning like, fuck, you can imagine. <laughs> fucking hell, <laughs> what the fuck yeah. is this? Exactly, all that kind of stuff. So we've made our beds where we're lying. Some of us weren't happy about sleeping in the rough, like. And uh, then the paras have brought like these big white boxes out. And we were thinking, these are going to be full of hot dogs and burgers and stuff. <laughs> and uh, they've took the sheet off. There was a live pig and a load of ducks. Live. <laughs> So a few lads, like a few vegetarians and stuff, are thinking, "What are you going to do with these pigs and ducks and that?" The, one of the paras is on top of the box. The other's waiting for like to pull the thing for the pig to run out. Pen knife, shump, straight into the pig's throat. And to this day, you know, you say like the phrase, "You squeal like a pig." This 
pigs gone up, squealed. There was lads like that, fucking blood everywhere. <laughs> oh no! Going a bit weepish. They've carved this pig up, cooked it on a barbecue, stuck it on a spit. Did the same with the ducks. Killed the ducks, and we ate the ducks. And uh, it was just mental. And then we had to go and have a bit of kip at night. And four or five in the morning, they were throwing smoke canisters underneath the things. <laughs> <laughs> Lads were shitting themselves. <laughs> Fucking start marching, and we were like, oh, man, marching through these woods. Did Keane get involved? Loved every second of it. <laughs> Forward at the mouth. Yeah, he, b- brilliant. He thought he was great. You know what I mean? So um, that was the first pre-season, the first trip with him. And uh, I have to say, I like. He was obviously my hero. I'd have jumped through hoops for him. Um, but I think he, he he made mistakes at Ipswich. I know he was at Sunderland, and he did a great job, didn't he? He got promoted, and I think he. He was given a few quid at Ipswich, and I think a few of his signings weren't the greatest. Did and, you ever uh, see him strip somebody, like just ruin somebody? Yeah, he had it in his locker to 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 give it someone in. Do you know what? Looking back now, I think if Roy was a manager <clears> with like a top team, with top players, what he was used to, all that throughout his playing, especially in Man United, I think he, people might have he, he could have been a bit more successful as a manager. But I think when he was working with lesser players. When he started tearing shreds off people, I just don't think people could handle it. A because it was Roy Keane doing it, and B because maybe they just didn't have the mental capacity to be, to be able to deal with whatever he was saying or how he put it across. But he's got to be, and I'm not criticising Roy Keane for one minute, but I am. He's got to know that the fact that he's at a Championship club now. He's working at a Championship club. Saying that though, in Roy's defence. He was a relatively inexperienced manager. He was, he was still young, you know what I mean? He, he was probably in his late thirties, early forties when he came to Ipswich. So that's just he was sense, still learning though, his it? trade, really. It's just, it's just common sense. Yeah, to think. maybe. I can, I'm not expecting uh, Robbo uh, uh, on the left wing for Ipswich to be like fucking Ryan Giggs. Mm. There was a few things that went on where he did tear strip, strips off people, and he did some things that he might look back on now and think I should have changed that. But one thing I will say about him was. As you see on the telly all the time, like he was a funny, funny man, like good sense of humour. He was a good character, and a very, very kind person as well. There was a few times where he was big into like team spirit, and we'd go and we'd, he'd say like, take the lads out for lunch today, and make sure like that everyone's there, the restaurants all sorted and that. And you'd go and you'd, you'd have a few beers and a, a bite to eat, and as captain and that, I'd go up and try and sort the bill out at the end, and he'd be like, no, it's it's all squared off. Mr. Keane's done. Sorted, Mister Keen, and and, uh, and it was yeah. And so in that respect, he was he was really good. But um, unfortunately for him, it just didn't quite work out. At Ipswich. So they said, never meet your heroes, right? You obviously you met yours. Do you still feel the same about him now? Yeah, absolutely. He's he'll always be someone where I've I've always looked up to him, and I knew him um, obviously with dad playing with him as well. But he was always a hero of mine. You'll never hear me say a bad word about him because. I, I loved him as a kid growing up. He was he was my hero. So 